Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? It is really exciting to be here with you, and I just want to welcome everyone joining us here at the Stones Crossing campus, all of our other campuses uh, and microsites, and a special, special shout out today to our Seymour campus. They're in their building, having their grand opening of their building. Can we give it up for our Seymour campus today? So excited for you guys. If you're a first-time guest with us here today, someone's invited you for Mother's Day or see a baby get dedicated, how about all those babies up there, huh? Uh, we are gonna we are gonna grow our church by reaching people in the community, and we're also gonna grow our church through making babies. I mean, we, that's something. Um, so yeah, but if you're a first time guest with us here today, uh, we want to just encourage you to text the word hello to six five two four eight. We'd love to put a gift in your hands. Thanks for coming. Um, you guys are in, in for a treat today. Happy Mother's Day to all our moms. Give, can we give it up one more time for our moms today? We hope that you feel honored and blessed and that today you get to, you know, maybe have the food that you like or get some sort of present or go somewhere fun that you like to go to. And we hope that you feel God's favor upon you and blessing upon you. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that today is not necessarily um, uh, fun for everyone. There, there are some, some ladies here who are trying to be moms. It's been a difficult process. You're not a mom yet. And so maybe, maybe today's not uh, a fun day for you. Maybe you're a mom today and, and you lost a child. And, and today is, is not necessarily a fun day for you. Uh, or maybe uh, your mom has passed away and it's a day of sadness for you. Um, and so we just want to acknowledge that it's, it's not a, 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 a great day for everyone out there. But you're on our hearts, you're on our prayers, and we're thinking of you as well. Um, so uh, thanks, thanks for being here. And I hope that the Lord meets you uh, in, uh, where you're at and blesses you. And so... Hey, you guys are in for a special treat today. I have invited my wonderful wife, my best friend, and wonderful mother up here uh, to share the stage with me. It's one of her favorite things to do. So would you give her a warm welcome here today? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, It's an honor to be up here today on Mother's Day. And um, I just hope that everybody, all you moms out there, feel blessed today and honored. So that's our goal. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, I asked her to come up here because I've had a front row seat to her mothering for 22 years, and I've got to see the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, all the good stuff and the bad stuff, and uh, you're an amazing mom. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if you could get up here and maybe just share some insights, some thoughts, some encouragement, um, some stories, and, and, uh, and just be a blessing to our moms. We have three children. Those of you who don't know, uh, we have, uh, I think we have a photo of them up there on the screen for you. Um, our middle child, his name is Bo. He's going to be a junior at Liberty University. Um, he just shaved his head yesterday. Um, so that's fine. That's cool. You know, guys do that. It's, it's, that grows back, and, and, and I actually like it. Um, our daughter is in the middle there. She is going to be a sophomore at Liberty University, and she's 18, and she just got a tattoo. Um, so <laughs> first, first in the family, um, we'll, we'll, we don't know how we feel about that. It's a dragon that goes across her entire <laughs> back. <laughs> It's a cross. It's, it's a little, it's a, it's a really pretty little cross, yeah. She's the black sheep. Um, so we're working through that. Um, and, then, and then our oldest, his name is Andrew, and uh, he just graduated from college uh, yesterday from Liberty University. So excited. We, did, we didn't know if he, he was going to make it, but he did. And uh, so he, what we're most excited about is him coming off the payroll. So um, <laughs> those of you who, who have kids that age, you understand. But uh, I've had a front row seat watching you parent these children, mom these children, and you're an amazing mom. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of share some, ask some questions, and, and uh, would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you're a dad here today, especially a single dad raising kids, this, a lot of this stuff is going to be transferable. This isn't just mom stuff. This is just really good parenting stuff. So, so if you're a dad, don't, don't tune us out. So... Being a mom filled with awesome moments, joyful moments from the time you give birth to that baby, first steps, first words, first day of kindergarten, then there's kindergarten graduation. How lame is that, by the way? I mean, such a lame event. No, it's adorable because it's tiny caps and tiny gowns and tiny people in them. It's so cute. You did like it. Yeah. Um, But... Filled with joyful moments, share, share with us, you, you know, what were the most joyful moments for you as a mom? Well, I think, and you know this, that for me, having everybody 
under the same roof and more specifically in the same room. That's like my favorite. Um, I enjoyed it when they were little. We, I loved, you know, the free things, you know, watching fireworks together, making gingerbread houses in the winter. Uh, now it's, it's kind of morphed into great conversations on the back porch now that they're becoming adults and like, you know, have great deep thoughts. That's been really fun. Um, I just enjoy spending time together. So I'm happiest when I can have that. It's, it's few and far between. And sometimes you have those moments when you can't all be together, like this weekend, uh, Bo and Ruby, they traveled home from Liberty University and needed about five days to kind of recover and get ready to go to their summer job, which is at Woodlands Camp in Georgia. They just are on the road right now, so say a prayer for them. Um, they were not able to be at Andrew's graduation, so we were able to travel down. It was a quick trip, and uh, one of the fathers of one of the kids that Andrew lived with and has been friends with since freshman year had a great idea. It was his last kid graduating, and he's like, I'm going to throw a party, and so he hosted a party in the backyard of the home where they've been living for the last two years, and it was cool to meet um, the families, the parents of these boys that have been our son's closest friends over the last four years. But when we were all done, one of the dads had the idea to gather them together and uh, all the parents laid hands on them and we were able to pray for them. And that's a picture of that right there. And there were some tears and it was just a really sweet moment. And for me in particular, the whole weekend was just... Uh, kind of a nugget, you know, just a, a, a sweet gift that I feel like the Lord gave me because we started our relationship at Liberty University. Uh, we'll be married 25 years this year. And yeah. And it, 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 I didn't, it really hit home with me that in the year of our 25th anniversary, in the place that we met, that he wouldn't be here if, if we hadn't met there at Liberty University. Our kids certainly wouldn't be here. Um, in this year, we are back in that space celebrating our oldest child's graduation 22 years later. Um, so it was just kind of a full circle moment for me, and that's one that I'll just tuck away. Yeah, yeah one of many. So, cool. so I asked our kids to share a few thoughts about their mom, and this is what Andrew said about his mom. He said, Mom is the most caring person in the world. I know this because she moved heaven and earth to be at my graduation in Virginia when she still had to speak for Mother's Day weekend. She is one of the most supportive people I know, and I don't know where I would be without her. And uh, what our son didn't tell, what Jackie didn't say was that he told us originally he wasn't going to walk in graduation, so that we were like, whew, well, we don't have to travel to, you know, eight hours, eight and a half hours in the car. But then about... Uh, uh, what, two three, weeks ago? Three weeks ago. He, he changed his mind. Um, so. And then he said, but you don't have to come. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so we got in the car yesterday at 4.45 a.m. to drive eight and a half hours to get back here for the four o'clock service uh, for Mother's Day. Yep. Um, but that's just kind you of the dr- He did all the driving, though. So I, he road warrior. You kept me awake. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> really okay so good times lots of good times there's also lots of difficult times moms yeah I mean really hard times painful times challenging times uh, what were the most challenging or most painful times for you as a mom mm-hmm. um, I think you know as a mom we want the best for our kids we want them to have every opportunity and I think the most challenging moments are when they screw up because <laughs> they're human we're human we're sinners they're sinners too They're going to make mistakes. Usually, hopefully, most of the time it's something small, but sometimes they make big ones. And those have been some of the most. When when Andrew got arrested? (laughs) No, that hasn't happened. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) What I was going to say is I won't share them with you out of respect for my children, but. Um, no, I, when they make the big ones, that that is the most challenging because as a mom, you have uh, a range of emotions. You know, you feel sad because they made a mistake and you, knew, you know that they stepped out of what God's will is for them. But you also feel angry because, you know, it's almost a direct assault against your leadership and all the time and effort that you've poured in. Depending on the circumstance, you might feel ashamed. You might feel embarrassed. 
And I've, I've certainly had all of those emotions at some point or another. And I think the most challenging thing is navigating through and wading through those emotions to try to figure out, like, how would God re- want me to respond in this situation? Because how I want to respond is, I know what I want to say, I know what I want to do, I know how I want to act, but that's not necessarily God's will in that situation. So that, that's been the most challenging thing. Yeah. You have navigated that really well, all those emotions. And I think... As parents, especially as moms, the way we respond to our kids' failures really shapes the way they recover from those failures. You know, if we if we're too if we're overly if we overly discipline them, or if we uh, are overly disappointed in them, uh, or back away from them in, in anger, uh, it, it really can hurt the relationship. You have done a, a really you've kept a really good balance of discipline, but also love. Yeah, it's, it's really been good. So, um, and he was joking about nobody got arrested yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of moms out there with little ones, right? We just saw a bunch up here on the stage, multiple little ones. Did you see the mom up here who had a little one? She was also pregnant, I think. Um, wow. Um, so we went through that phase, right? We had multiple littles when they were very small. And um, a lot of times moms, really a win for the day is just keeping the children alive. Yep. Like that's it. <laughs> Um, can, what, would you, what encouragement would you have for the moms with littles um, in, in mm-hmm. anything? Yeah, so when uh, our youngest, Ruby, was born, our older boys were three and one and both still in diapers. So that was interesting and it was fun and it was really challenging. There's a lot I don't remember from that stage of my life. <laughs> it's all kind of a blur. But I, I would encourage um, moms of young children to do your best to start your day with Jesus, however that looks. If that looks like you have a toddler that gets up with the son, you're scooping him or her up into your lap and letting them experience that time in the Bible with you. If you have a very small, you know, an infant and you're feeding them all the time, you know, you've got the Bible app on your phone. Uh, you have those times. I remember those times as being very sweet and special times. For some reason, I really liked to read the book of Colossians while I was feeding my babies. And I don't know, it was just some sweet and special language in that book that I loved. Um, however that looks, whenever you can get it, take your time with Jesus. So that's my first piece of advice. Second would be to take breaks. This might look like date night. This might look like dinner out with your friends in which you are having a grown-up conversation and you are not cutting up somebody else's food. Um, You know, get out to a coffee shop and read a book that has big words in it. You know, use your brain, remind yourself, you know, that there was a woman in your body before you had a baby, before you became a mother, and she's still in there, and she's great. You know, so bring her out every once in a while. You know, put on makeup and put on pants that aren't stretchy every once in a while and just... You know, take care of yourself in that way, so take some breaks. Um, I would say develop friendships with other moms. Uh, And I know that it's really easy, I think, to isolate in this life stage because, especially if you're home, um, it's just easy to be that way. And there were times that that that's how I functioned. Um, But it's so important to get out there and develop friendships with other moms and to uh, rely on them and get advice from them and support But not only moms who are in the same life stage as you, but moms who are one or two life stages ahead of you, if you can seek them out and become friends with them, I learned some really valuable lessons in parenting from moms who are just a stage or two ahead of me. They were able to look into my situation and either say, just chill out, like it's not that big of a deal, or they were able to say, you're not crazy. This is really like the real deal and you can freak out about this just a little bit. Um, mom's time out. I'm involved in that here at Emmanuel and I, I love that because it's just a cross section of moms of all different ages with kids of all different ages and it's a great opportunity for people to engage in relationships specifically around motherhood. Um, I would say, okay, the last two things I want to share are going to sound contradictory but they're not. So the first is to, to the best of your ability create a structure of order and discipline in your home. And I'm not talking about like discipline as in like these are the rules and we're going to obey and that's super important and it's huge. But I'm talking about like structure. What happens to the shoes and the backpacks when you walk in the door? Uh, At what time of the day are we going to take a break and clean up all the toys? Um, How are we going to work together to clear the table after a meal? You know, those sorts of things, creating systems to allow your little children to be involved in the process of making things structured and ordered is 
so is, can be life-saving. It can do wonders in bringing that level of chaos way down. But at the same time, don't uh, overdo it. Enjoy the moment. It's okay to have some messes. It's okay for everything to be a little bit crazy. I, I recently came across the title of a book, and it's called A Perfectly Kept House is the Sign of a Misspent Life. And I think that's true. So there's a balance there. You need to bring down the chaos, but also, you know, chaos is a little bit like it rules the day sometimes, and it just is what it is. So enjoy it. Embrace it. I would have liked a little bit more structure, mm -hmm. and, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, you still did a great job. So. Um, it's true. It's great. So all three of our children have, have a relationship with God. They're all going to summer camp this summer to be camp counselors and, and pour back into students' lives. And we, we're thrilled about that as parents. They love God. I've certainly had a, a part in that and I'm knowing God, but you have had probably even a greater part because you spent more time with them at home. Um, what exactly, there's moms out here today that would love some insight on like, I want my children to know God. I want them to be growing in a relationship with him. What are some things that you can say to those moms? How did you do that? Um, I think in our home, I did my best to make faith the theme of our home. And I don't mean uh, scripture, word, art, and inspirational things hanging on the wall. Those are great. We have them. And I love that. I love Hobby Lobby <laughs> for that reason. But I'm talking about faith, meaning how are we in relationship with God? And how do we relate to him? And how does that impact our every day? Not only our every day, but every moment of every day. I really, I tried to make that the theme of our home. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter six, I love because it speaks so uh, well to parenting. And in, in verse six, Moses is talking to the nation of Israel about um, what to do with all the commandments that God has given them. And he says in verse six, that the words that I command you today shall be on your heart as the parent. But then in verse seven, you shall teach them diligently to, to your children when you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. So basically all the time we're talking about God's words, his way, the way that we are supposed to live in this life, in this world, in his uh, in the kingdom of God, we're talking about that all of, the t all of the time. Later on in the chapter, Moses addresses what to do when your older kids ask, well, okay, so why? Like, I understand what God is asking us to do, why? And his answer is this in verse 24. The Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear, fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And I just, I love that chapter. I think it speaks so, uh, so well to how we can make faith a part and how we should make faith a part of our daily life. So I say all of that to say that as a mom, you can't give anything to your kids that you don't already have. Uh, you cannot give them a relationship with God that is not already been worked out in your own life. So Danny speaks about this all the time. We have to get the questions of our identity. We have to get all of those questions answered in Christ before we can really impart those, those truths to our kids. Um, and number two is teaching your kids to love God doesn't just happen on Sunday morning. Um, I love our ministries that we have, our kids' ministries, students' ministries. We have amazing staff people we have amazing content that's delivered and planned every week. And, you know, my mom comes on, Sunday, on Wednesday morning and she cuts out all the crafts. And I know there's several ladies who do that in the office to prepare for what is going to happen here on Sunday morning. We have incredible impact team members who love on our kids and who do their best to teach them. And those are all amazing things, but they're not enough. So we are here to partner with you. The church is here to partner with you. But faith has got to be a daily uh, conversation and action in the home. So it's, we're not just bringing out God. We're not just bringing out the Bible when our children are in trouble or when we need to bring the hammer down. It's, okay, you are anxious or nervous about this. Let's pray about it. And then circling back the next week and being like, oh, my gosh, like, look how God worked that thing out for you and be able to point back to God's hand in your life. Yeah. I think another way that you have helped our kids is just by being a servant. And um, 
just always, always putting other people first. My, Jackie has uh, brought our kids to he- church on Sunday, yes, to be blessed, but also to be on the impact team. So all of our kids were serving alongside you on the impact team and then learning how to give back, and now they're, they're still doing it when they've left our house. This is what Bo said uh, about you. He said, it's our middle child. He said, my mother is the definition of a servant. <clears throat> she puts all of her family before herself. The things she has done for me without me knowing cannot be counted. She is one of those people who genuinely cares. I don't deserve her. That's from Bo. So you, you've, you've done a great job. Thank you uh, for that. Um, okay, switch gears. You ready? Okay. Yep. Mom guilt, let's talk about it, because it's real. Um, mm-hmm. we talk, you said earlier, our kids mess up, they make mistakes. Moms mess up and make mistakes, and so a lot of moms kind of walk around in this, almost like this constant discouragement of, I'm not enough, I've screwed up, I just feel guilty about everything. You have struggled with that. Share some words, insight, encouragement mm-hmm. uh, to deal with mom guilt. Mm-hmm. When I think of mom guilt, I think of three separate categories. The first is uh, you're going to mess up. <laughs> you're simple. You're human. I'm simple. I'm human. We are going to make mistakes. And when we do, it's really important to humble yourself before your children. Yes, you can do that. Apologize and get back on and ask for forgiveness and get back at it. I've seen so, you do that so many times. I think it's really impactful for the kids because it allows them to see that they can then go humble themselves, apologize, ask for forgiveness. If you can do it before them, they can do it for, before their brothers or sister or peer. Uh, so that's very important. The second is the category of, and this is mostly pertaining to older children, they're going to mess up. They are going to make mistakes and it's not your fault. As moms of little kids, yes, we are responsible for most of their behavior when they're very small, but as they get bigger, they are going to make their own choices. They have their own will, their own desires, and God has given them the, the ability and the responsibility to make those choices, and if they decide to go a different path than what you have hoped and dreamed for them, it's not your fault. So moms, we have to overcome that as well. And then there's this whole third category. It's kind of in the middle of those two, and that's the things that we feel guilty about that we shouldn't feel guilty about. Like, these are the things that you didn't do wrong, your kid didn't do wrong, it just is what it is. So let me explain. Uh, We, as moms, want the best for our kids. We want every opportunity. We want them to be, have the, the most opportunity to do the best thing with this one life that they have. And when they don't get an opportunity, they don't get a a part in the play, or they don't get picked to be on the team, somehow we think it's our fault. You know, your kid doesn't get invited to be in the gifted program, and you know, you're like, oh, we picked the wrong elementary, or the wrong preschool. You know, it's all my, it's what did I do when they were 18 months old? Where did I fail? You know, so now they're 10, and you know, they're not doing the things that all their other friends are doing. Those things are not your fault. And it's okay. We just have to release ourselves from those and move on. Danny has had to say to me, and still does to this day, there are a lot of things to feel bad about. This is not one of them. Only feel bad about the things that you have done wrong. And there are times when I have to have that reality check and just say, yeah, you're right. You're like, this is not my problem. It is a thing. It happened. It's going to be okay. We're going to recover and move on. Yeah, one of the things I love about being a man um, is... (laughs) (laughs) I mean, there's lots of things, but um, one of the things I love about being a man is that dads really don't struggle with this. Like, if, if my kid doesn't get picked to be in the gifted program, you know, my, my rational brain says, well, you know, he just ain't that smart. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a problem, and it certainly isn't my fault, um, but... Yeah, so I, yeah, so I hope that, hope that releases you moms, a little freedom there. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about phones. We, I mentioned this last week if you were here and you heard my, my sermon, I talked about this. It, it, we live in a phone-based society now where now moms and dads have to navigate this whole thing. When do you get a smartphone? When do you get social media? It's, it's a, it's, it was a challenge for us as well. Um, and any words of encouragement or guidance or insight to the moms out there today um, on how to navigate this minefield of, of cell phone, uh, social media would be awesome. Well, we are, I'm not an expert on this. There are books that you can read. There are experts you can listen to. I'm not one of them. I can just share with you what we did and how it's currently going. 
Um, and we were really that first generation. I didn't have a phone until after I had a child. So we were really that first generation of parents who had to make this decision. And for us, we decided not to put a smartphone in their hands until they were around eighth or ninth grade. And a big reason for me was that I feel like they were around their peers all day long. They were with them until school at th- you know, three or four in the afternoon. And then most of the time practice or work or rehearsal until six or seven in the evening. Why do they then need to continue to be influenced by their peers till 10 p.m. at night? Like you need a safe place to come home, to get a break, to regroup, to remember like, you know, the values and all the things that we believe as a family so that you can go back the next day and fight, you know, all of it again. So that was a big reason why. But of course, as soon as we handed them the smartphone, oh, I I wanted to share with you a quote. And there is a fitness instructor, fitness coach online. His name is Dan Go, And he says um, something like, go ahead and give your kids a smartphone when you're ready for their childhood to end. I just thought that was really impactful. Uh, As soon as they ask for a phone, they're going to start asking for social media. And for us, you know, we held it off as long as we could. They didn't get it till they were around 18. We just kept saying no, no, no. And and in the beginning, they were very insistent. It was a constant battle. And then they just kind of quit asking. And then finally, when they did get it, I believe two out of the three children right now have deleted everything. And the third one who has it doesn't use it. They use it sparingly. And I think that that's because they have been able to see the impact that it has on their mood, their mind, and their soul. And I don't think that they would have been able to make that distinction if they'd had it since they were 10 or 11. Um, So that's how it's going for us. Um, But I will say my advice would be for your family, whenever you do make that decision to let your, your kids have a phone, um, it, you feel like you're, you're ending a battle, right? I mean, they're asking, and so you finally give it a, whew, you know, that, that battle's over. But you've really just created another job for yourself. <laughs> because now you have to constantly monitor and stay one step ahead of everything that's going on and all the new technology that comes out. So I would say um, do your best to, to monitor everything, put up guardrails, have a, I pay for that phone, so it's mine, so I can get into it whenever I want. I can wow. have it from you whenever I want kind of policy. Uh, we had our kids put it up in the kitchen at night. We knew their passwords. Um, and we, I did some parent apps and things to like limit things like games and stuff like that until, uh, they were older. Yeah. I know that that's like a whole 45 minute conversation. I just wanted you to speak into it just really briefly. I appreciate it. Um, Okay, so we've been intentional parents. Everything we've tried to do is just with with intention. We've tried not to be reactionary. What's the most intentional thing that you've done as a mom for our kids that have created some special moments Mm -hmm. uh, for for you, for us, for our family? I think for us, it's been, we've been really intentional about creating conversational, like an environment where conversation can happen. So uh, that's always been super important to me. There, there were seasons where I would, I would map out the calendar for the week and be like, okay, we're going to say no to that. We're not going to go to that. We're not, because we got to have dinner just a couple nights a week uh, together. And so that has always been important to me. Uh, at, during my time as a mom, I have been a stay-at-home mom. I've been a mom who went back to college. I've been a mom who taught outside of the home or worked outside of the home. And I've been a mom that's worked from home. So I've had a little snapshot of every one of those. And I've just, I've always tried to put my job as mom first. So that means if I'm working from home, if I'm studying from home, and they walk in the door from school, I'm putting this device down, I'm closing that laptop, and I'm making eye contact, and I'm waiting for them to talk. There have been many, many times I've gone in the kitchen to do something inconsequential that doesn't have to happen right now because they're there, and I'm just waiting for that conversation to happen. Sometimes they'll come in and grab a snack and leave, not say a word, that's okay. Sometimes they come in and they just unload. So I think it's important to... Be able to position yourself to show them, like, I'm open, I'm available to you, and to make that eye contact and and give time for those conversations. Yeah, Yeah, you've really done well. Our daughter Ruby uh, said this about you. She said, "Um, mom is an amazing listener and always makes me feel heard and loved. She constantly puts others before before herself and has a servant's heart. She is one of the most loving people that I know from our daughter Ruby. Um, you're a great listener, and I've watched you do that time and time again. Um, 
me not so much, and that's why they don't talk to me that much. <laughs> so, that's okay. Um, okay, so um, our kids are now older, they were younger, they, so your roles change as kids get older, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, so I've watched you kind of transition your role as a mother of young children to now mother of older teenagers and young adults. Um, how is your role, how, what are some specifics that you've done? Maybe there's parents are in that transition mm -hmm. as well. Any words of well, encouragement? I'm working on it. I'm right in the middle of this, you know, 18, 20, 22. Uh, I love the Life 360. A little too much sometimes. He's starting to take it away and For make me delete know, it. That's an app where you track your children's location. <laughs> yeah. So that's a big help. Uh, no, I, I am going from more, the less of a teacher and an instructor to more of a coach and a mentor and a friend. I, I'm trying to change my vocabulary from, I need you to do this, I want you to do this, you should do this, to, have you considered? <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. I'm struggling with that, but I'm trying really hard because I know that they're becoming adults and adults don't want to be told what to do. And so if I don't change my, um, if I don't shift with them, if I don't change the way I parent as they grow older, I will jeopardize that relationship. And that's the last thing that I want to do. Yeah. So my daughter still calls the house every day, multiple times a day. And uh, so we, 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 we have to... I'm here for it. I'm, I'm picking it up every time. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so we have to work on this transition a little bit more because um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm glad that she feels like she can call you. Uh, this has been great. Um, I love the fact that you've shared and there's so much more we could talk about, but do you have any closing thoughts for us this, and for the moms today, encouragements? Yeah, I, I, um, I just want to encourage every mom out there in whatever form you find yourself a mom. You might be a mother figure. You might be a stepmom. You might be an adoptive mom, biological mom, grandma mother that is doing parenting things. Um, what, however that looks in your life, I want to encourage you that God has picked you. He has given you this job. And this job is more important than any salary you could make, any job that you could do, any, uh, any degree that you could get. Any, I've done these things and I have loved every aspect of it. But mothering has always risen to the top because why? Because you are the only mom for these kids. And God not only has picked you and, and everything about you, your history, your present, and all your idiosyncrasies and flaws to be their mother, but they've also picked, God has also picked these children to be in your life. And so not only is it a really big deal and a huge, huge job, which you know, I know I'm not telling you anything new, but not only is that true, but he has also given you already everything that you need to do it well. Uh, 2 Peter 1.3 says that God has given you, um, in his divine power, he's granted to you all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. He has given you everything you need to be the kind of mom that you want to be, the kind of mom he's calling you to be, the kind of mom that your children need you to be. And that, to me, has always given me so much, um, I don't know, peace, to be able to go back to the Lord and say, okay, God, I feel like I'm failing. I totally messed it up. Like, are, am I ruining my children? <laughs> and he's been able to say to me, no, like I've given you everything that you need. And sometimes that just looks like humility. Sometimes that looks like just praying that God would fill in the gaps where I'm falling short. Sometimes that looks like going in and saying, sorry, you know, going in the bathroom and crying and getting it all out. And however that looks, he's given you everything you need. And so I just want to encourage you today for, with that. Can you guys give it up for my wife real quick? Thank you so much. You know, as, as, as we wrap up, I just want to share some encouraging words with you. You know, uh, we certainly are not the perfect parents. We have, you've not, you're not the perfect mom, but we're, we're putting in the work and we're trying really, really hard and doing our best. And um, what the, I would say the secret to our marriage success or the secret to our parenting success uh, has been a relationship with Christ. And myself as the leader of our home, it may not seem like I'm the leader of my home, given how awesome Jackie is, uh, but I try, to, I try to lead us as a family unit to focus on Christ and have Christ at the center of our home. 
And, um, and from, from him comes all of the strength and the wisdom and the guidance that we need. And that's led to, to a lot of the success that we've had as a family with our, with our children. And um, I would say that, you know, if you're here today and you want to experience abundant life, eternal life, you want to have a, a solid family, you want to have a solid life, put, put your faith in Christ. Like he's, he came to this world to give you abundant life and eternal life. I want to read a quick passage to you and then, and then we'll wrap things up here. But this, these are the words of Jesus. In, in John chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus said, for this is the will of my father. What an incredible statement. Like Jesus is saying, you want to know what God is up to? You want to know what God's will is? Listen to this. That everyone who looks on the son and believes in him, talking about himself, should have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day Jesus says the reason I came into this world is for you to put your trust in me and by trusting in me receive this thing called eternal life which is abundant life not just going to heaven when you die yes that's that's thrown in but abundant life right now and that's why Jesus Christ came. And then he says, on the last day, I'll raise you up. What does that mean? That means that when you die or if Jesus comes back, your soul will depart from your body and you will spend eternity in heaven. The other option is not so exciting. If you die without Christ and you don't know him, you will spend eternity somewhere and it will not be with God. You will end up paying for your sins yourself. And the penalty of sin is eternal separation from God. And Jesus says, the Father sent me so that that won't happen to you. The Father sent me so that I I could die on the cross for your sins. And by trusting in me, have your sins washed away and receive eternal life. And from that relationship with me, everything blossoms. A marriage, parenting, finances, everything comes from Jesus as the source. So if you'd like to put your faith in Christ today, I'm going to say a simple prayer. This is a prayer of you looking to Jesus and asking him to be your savior, to wash away your sins and receive eternal life. Will you pray with me if you feel led to? Just say this to him, dear Jesus, I'm looking to you today in faith, believing that you are the son of God sent from the father to die on the cross for my sin, to pay the penalty I should have paid to cancel a debt that I owed. Jesus, I reach out to you today in faith. I ask you to cleanse my heart, wash away my sin, and forgive me. Make me your child today by faith. I turn to you, trusting you to be my savior. Today I receive your eternal life. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know, the Bible says when one person does that, there's rejoicing in heaven. Can we rejoice right now, church? Amen. If you did that, if you just put your faith in Christ, if you would text the word SAVE to 65248, we would love to put a box in your hands inside this box. There is a Bible to get you started reading and some instructions on how to uh, get, get connected to the church. And there's also a gift in here from us to you to say congratulations. So wherever campus you're at, if you're watching online, text the word SAVE to 65248. We would love to put one of these in your hands in the foyer at your location. Can we give it up one more time for what God is doing? Amen, church. Hey, before we wrap up and dismiss to the local teams, uh, really quick, we are starting a brand new series next week called Fix My. Anybody have anything broken in your life? Fix My. We're not gonna talk about fixing your car, fixing your roof. We're not gonna talk about that because I don't know how to do any of that. We're gonna talk about like fixing your fears, fixing your emotions, fixing your finances, fixing your sexuality. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. We're gonna get into some really, really good stuff. So uh, I hope you'll come back next week and you'll bring a friend. Right now, I'd like to dismiss the local teams. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Bring a friend.